Hello, we have completed our study of Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper painting, and as we continue our journey through the sacred celebration of Triduum, I'd like to offer, continue offering some reflections of works of art, great masterpieces, uh, that help us to journey through Good Friday and Holy Saturday. So today, I'd like to look at an image, a fresco, of the crucifixion of Jesus, as today we celebrate Good Friday. This fresco of Jesus' crucifixion is done by the Italian painter Giotto, who was a Franciscan uh, and did a number of different works um, throughout all of Italy. In fact, if you go to Assisi today, he has almost all of the frescoes in the Basilica of St. Francis in Assisi. This particular fresco is from the Scrovingi Chapel in Padua. Now, let's take a look at it, and of course, what we see going on there is a whole lot of action in different places, which shouldn't be surprising to us. Giotto was a great master as well, and so of course there's going to be lots of things. The first thing I want to draw your attention to is the skull at the bottom of the crucifix. This has a couple different reasons for symbolism. The first is that it's a symbol of Adam, who was the first to taste death, the first of us human beings to taste death. Now, as we see the skull at the bottom of the cross, it's a sign that Jesus is victorious over death. Jesus conquers death in his crucifixion. And so, this victory of the cross is depicted by the triumphal nature of the cross over the skull. Even though Jesus is dying, a seemingly sign of weakness, this is actually transformed into a sign of power, victory over death itself. It also has symbolism um, going back to, of course, the name or the place where Jesus was crucified, Golgotha, which was known as the place of the skull that we hear in the scriptures. So a couple different parts of meaning for that skull. It's kind of nice because um, in our crucifix, the icon crucifix at St. Thomas Aquinas, there's also a skull at the bottom of the cross. And sometimes people ask me, well, Father, what's with the skull and the crucifix? Um, well, now you know. When we look to the right and to the left of Jesus on the cross, we see two different groups, and they're in a little bit of tension, and there's a little bit of juxtaposition with these two groups. To the left of Jesus, we see a group of soldiers, the same soldiers who would have nailed Jesus to the cross and crucified him. Now they're arguing over who gets his garments out of greed. Um, they're arguing about that. These are sort of the unjust, not only those who nailed Jesus to the cross, but now they're still trapped in their greed, and so they're arguing over who gets uh, the clothing. There's also an interesting figure in the midst of these people, and it's actually St. Peter. Which one of these people is St. Peter? Well, look for the halo, and that is St. Peter. Now, you might wonder, why is Peter, with all these guys that are sort of struggling? Um, well, if you remember right, uh, Peter himself was struggling at this time. He had just denied Jesus three times. And so here he is, sort of in the midst of his own struggles, his own denial, um, and his own struggles to be with Christ at the cross. Now, when we look at these guys sort of struggling over there, the ones that nail him to the cross, that's juxtaposed with the group of people on the right side of Jesus. These are, of course, the holy women uh, and St. John. So we have the group of three over there on the right, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, is right in the center, and she's fainting uh, after so much sorrow, out of so much sorrow. But she's being supported by two people next to her, the other Mary and John the Apostle. This is a great reminder for us that uh, we will face the cross in our lives. We will face sorrow and even suffering uh, and difficulties in our life. And we might faint out of this. It might be too much sometimes, but we don't go at the cross alone. We are supported by the other disciples of Jesus that journey with us. We are supported by our friends and our family who can hold us up even at moments of weakness. When we look to the feet of Jesus, we see Mary Magdalene, who is kissing Jesus' feet, who is adoring Jesus' feet. And of course, she's sorrowful, but uh, still there nonetheless. She's not fleeing out of fear, but instead she wants to get even closer to Jesus' feet. As we look up in the sky, we see angels, and when we look at the faces, the reaction of these angels, they are lamenting, they are crying, some of them holding instruments to even catch the precious blood of Jesus. When we look all around the painting, it's basically a painting of sorrow. Yes, we see Jesus at the center of the painting, but it's not really all that much to look at. It's just sort of an ordinary Jesus. There isn't anything particularly special or expressive about Jesus on the cross in the middle. 
really what this painting is all about is one of sorrow, of lamentation, of sadness. Uh, our hearts break. And so what Giotto is trying to do is to draw us into that moment of the crucifixion, to contemplate uh, the sadness, to contemplate uh, what was going on and how terrible uh, this was. Certainly, we call this day Good Friday, but it's not without its sorrow as well. And so we're drawn into this through the faces, through the reaction. Uh, what's at the center of this painting is not Jesus. Perhaps he's physically at the center of the painting. But in reality, uh, at the center of this painting is sorrow itself, sorrow at the day that our Lord and Savior died. But then also, of course, one of hope, that while that day was sad, while there was pain and suffering, it also won us victory over the cross. It won us uh, the price of our salvation and forgiveness of sins. Joto is a great master and reminds us that we are called to enter into this and to take on the cross as well. We are not only called into the sorrow of the moment to say, yes, that was a bad thing, but also to give our lives as well on the cross of whatever it is, whatever crosses we carry, and to sacrifice ourselves out of love for others. Next time, uh, tomorrow on Holy Saturday, I'd like to reflect on a different painting, so please join us for that as well. Stay holy and stay healthy. Have a good Friday, and may God bless you.